थ्री एंड हाफ ट्रिलियन डॉलर्स दैट्स हाउ मच एन वीडिया इज वर्थ टूडे मोर देन एप्पल गूगल एमेजॉन एंड मेटा दिस इज इन जस्ट द स्टोरी ऑफ अ कंपनी दैट गॉट लकी इन द ए आई बू इट्स वट हैपन्स वेन अ कंपनी बिल्ड फॉर द फ्यूचर इवन वेन नो वन वॉचिंग दिस इज द स्टोरी ऑफ एन वीडिया एंड हाउ इट क्वाइटली बिकेम द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टेक कंपनी इन द वर्ल्ड In 2006, Nvidia launched something only a few people outside research labs cared about, CUDA, which stood for Compute Unified Device Architecture. It was a software platform and toolkit that allowed developers to properly utilize the full power of Nvidia GPUs for tasks other than just video game graphics. See, before CUDA, programming a GPU was quite complex, requiring low-level machine language or intricate APIs. CUDA simplified this by enabling programmers to write programs that run faster on Nvidia GPUs using standard programming languages that they already know such as C, C++ and Java. They made the huge computing power of GPUs accessible to a much wider range of people and hence GPUs could be now used for other various demanding tasks like scientific computing, video editing, financial modeling and cryptocurrency mining. but none of these capabilities made any headlines then until 2012 when the big bang moment for ai happened three researchers at university of toronto elia satskiva alex krzevski and gyof hinton used nvidia's gpus running cuda to train alexnet a deep learning neural network and it performed exceptionally well in the image recognition competition with a lot less errors Fun fact, Elias Sitskiva would then go on to work at Google Brain and later became co-founder and CTO at OpenAI in 2015. This research showed that GPUs were not just about making computers faster but could be used for an entirely new way of computing, training computers to learn from massive data sets. So, CUDA made Nvidia's graphic cards a gold standard for companies building and training AI models. By 2022, Nvidia then launched the new H100 chip which was a successor of A100 but offering 3 to 6x the performance in AI and machine learning related tasks. It was specially optimized for transformer models, the ones used in large language models like GPT, stable diffusion, llama, etc. So, the H100 quickly became the new industry standard and the demand exploded with all the big tech companies fighting to get enough supply. But Nvidia doesn't stop there. In 2023, they launched DGX Cloud, their own cloud service platform where anyone can get supercomputer level GPU power to train or run massive AI models without the need of hundreds of GPUs, data centers, etc. So, how exactly does the DGX Cloud work? A single DGX node includes 8 H100s connected via NVLink. a super fast gpu to gpu connection architecture these systems are tied together into gpu super clusters so you can scale up to thousands of gpus if needed it also includes access to nvidia's ai software stack like nvidia ai enterprise model training libraries performing tuning tools etc you can actually use the dgx cloud via the big cloud platforms like azure oracle cloud and google cloud So in simple terms DGX Clouds gives you the plug and play access to the kind of infrastructure companies like OpenAI or Anthropic use but without needing your own data center and now Nvidia isn't just selling GPUs they are renting out the full stack compute memory networking and software looking at Nvidia's monopoly the big tech were getting smarter and decided to build their own chips competing with Nvidia But before we get into knowing what these companies are building, it's important to understand two key terms in GPU building and usage: training and inference. Training is when an AI model is learning, crunching huge data sets, adjusting weights, basically getting smarter. It's compute heavy, expensive, and takes days or even weeks for big models. Inference is when the model is already trained, and now it's being used to make predictions or generate responses to users on a large scale. This is what happens every time you ask ChatGPT a question or Instagram decides what to show you next. Now, let's look at what some of the big tech companies are doing. Google is building their own chips called TPUs, tensor processing units. They actually started this back in 2016, way before the current AI boom. 
TPUs are built for training and inference, especially for models using TensorFlow, which Google also created. Today, they're running on TPU V5 and use these chips to train and run massive models like Gemini. These chips are deeply integrated into Google's AI stack, powering Google's search, YouTube recommendations, and even ads. Amazon is building two chips, Inferentia and Trainium. Inferentia is designed for inference and is optimized for things like fast response times and low cost, especially when you're serving millions of requests. Trainium, on the other hand, is built for training AI models. It competes directly with NVIDIA's H100, but is tailored for Amazon's own cloud setup. These chips are available inside AWS, Amazon Web Services, so companies using AWS for AI don't have to depend on NVIDIA if they don't want to. Meta is building its own chip too, called MTIA, or Meta Training and Inference Accelerator. Right now, it's mainly focused on inference, not training. They use it internally for things like Instagram feed ranking, reels, and ad recommendations. Basically anything that needs to run models super fast at a massive scale. MTIA is Meta's move towards controlling more of their own AI infrastructure. Microsoft recently announced its own AI chip called Maya. Maya is built for training large language models and is tightly integrated with Azure, Microsoft's cloud platform. It's also likely being used to power workloads from OpenAI, since Azure is their official compute partner. Alongside Maya, Microsoft also built Cobalt, a custom CPU meant for general cloud tasks, not just AI. With both chips, Microsoft is trying to reduce its reliance on third-party hardware and own more of the full compute stack. So, despite all these big players making their own chips, NVIDIA isn't panicking, and there's a clear reason for that. It's not just about the hardware, but NVIDIA's real advantage is CUDA. It's been almost two decades since NVIDIA launched CUDA, and it has become deeply embedded across all AI ecosystems. It's tightly integrated with the most widely used AI frameworks like PyTorch, TensorFlow, Jax, etc., and with developer tools, research pipelines, and enterprise infrastructure. So, the reality is that the most engineers, researchers, and AI companies are already building on CUDA. Switching away isn't as simple as swapping a chip. It means rewriting code, changing workflows, validating new results, rebuilding tooling, and that's a massive lift, both in terms of time and cost. Unless there's a very strong reason to move away, most teams stick with CUDA. Because it works, it's stable, and it's battle-tested at scale. And the second reason is the entire ecosystem NVIDIA has built. They've earned deep developer trust over time, with stable hardware, reliable software, and tools that plug straight into real-world workflows. They also dominate the cloud ecosystem. Most companies run AI workloads on AWS, Azure, or GCP, and all of them still rely on NVIDIA GPUs. And when it comes to massive models like GPT, Gemini, or Llama, NVIDIA is still the only player that can reliably handle training at that scale, thanks to H100 clusters, NVLink, and DGX Cloud. And here's the kicker. Even Google, Microsoft, and Meta, despite building their own chips, still use NVIDIA for a huge part of their training and inference workloads. So yes, competition is growing. But between CUDA, developer loyalty, cloud dominance, and large-scale readiness, NVIDIA remains the backbone of the AI world. According to Jensen Huang, the future isn't just about building better AI models. It's about building the systems they run on. That's why NVIDIA is focused on two major frontiers in physical AI. Omniverse, a platform that creates high-fidelity simulations of the real world. It's not just 3D graphics. Omniverse simulates real physics, gravity, collisions, lighting, and even surface friction. That means you can build a digital twin of a warehouse, a street, or a factory and train a robot in it as if it were real life. No hardware damage, no physical risk, no limits on how many times you can reset and retry. But simulation alone is not enough. That's where NVIDIA's Cosmos comes in. It's kind of world model for AI that gives machine a sense of physical common sense. Just like ChatGPT has a language model trained on text, Cosmos is being trained to understand the logic of the real world. Like what happens when you drop something, how objects move, what causes what. 
it encodes the basics gravity friction inertia spatial awareness cause and effect all the things that we take for granted as humans the combination of omniverse and cosmos enables the generation of an infinite number of future scenarios for physical systems all grounded in physical truth this is similar to how chat gpt combined with pdfs or search can generate an infinite number of interesting answers grounded in factual context this synergy is crucial for nvidia's vision of a future where everything that moves will be robotic some day and it will be soon this includes self driving cars humanoid robots smart buildings and autonomous warehouses so what's the point of all this it's not just that nvidia got lucky during the ai boom it's that they made the right bets long before the world caught on from powering games to powering intelligence itself didn't just become a chip company it became the compute layer for the ai age some say it's a bubble others call it the next industrial revolution but either way nvidia isn't just part of the story it's the platform it's being written on so the next time you use chat gpt or generate an image or watch a robot move like it's alive just remember the company behind the curtain